since I'm not doing any life size builds and I want to at least have something on my YouTube channel for like the two people that care, I thought I'll record my process of me converting my secondary system into a sleeper build. So I just recently got myself a nice little uh, speaker bar for my Dell monitor, so I finally got that I think all situated. And now I got myself a computer that's really, really old, and I'm hoping to transplant all my parts into it so I can make it into a sleeper build. Because right now this is how my this is how the computer is all set up. It's pretty much an open air system and it's just really gaudy looking. And hopefully the case I got will actually work for what I need. And the case I'm going to be using is this old monstrosity right here. Believe it or not, this thing still works. I don't know if you can hear anything Buddha, but it's an old, old system. How old? It's running an in, not Intel, it's running an AMD, uh, it's running an AMD single core processor. Surprisingly, it runs Windows 7, but it's a very, very old computer. So, my idea is to gut this thing and see if I can actually add in all my, all my current components on my secondary system into this thing. Now, now, I will be forced to actually swap out the uh, CD drive because this thing is using IDE. Luckily, I have a few SATA drive uh, drives laying around, and I do want to use the DVD drive on this every now and then. And here is the inside of the computer. Surprisingly, it's not as dusty as I would have thought. It's actually fairly well taken care of. Okay, that CD drive is getting annoying. There we go. Solve that issue. But. You can tell it's an old system just by that old slot right there. Of course, there's this, there's the old ID drive and all the other little crap. This is an old system. So hopefully the motherboard I have will work in this. And the one thing that's definitely good about this computer or this little or this computer I got is this old gateway monitor. This is actually. A Fairly high resolution gateway monitor and it's at 75 hertz. So the 3x4 it's old, but it's a keeper monitor. I'm not throwing this monitor away, I'm keeping this. Now I, I don't know what I'm gonna do with the components inside this thing. I do know I need to wipe this drive, but uh I don't know what else I'm gonna do with the components since they're so old. Maybe I'll just uh convert it to an old XP machine, I don't know yet. So right now what I need to do is I need a Take this thing apart, clean it, wipe this drive, and uh, see if I can fit all, my, fit all my components inside this thing. Theoretically, that should be possible. Oh yeah, there's one more thing I need to see. I actually got this thing from a neighbor down the street. So, obviously, when I got this thing, I hosed it with disinfectant and whatnot. And as you can tell, we're in the process of also wiping the drive. So, um... What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back when I get the when I get the drive wiped and I'm gonna start the whole process of gutting everything and cleaning it. Now don't expect me to be as intricate or as uh, good when it comes to uh, some of the other YouTubers like the like some of the Australian dudes that we watch and a few of the other tech YouTubers that kind of do these older that kind of mess with these older systems. Again, I'm a one man camera crew and I don't know how to properly do videos. All right, and the first thing I gotta do is I gotta wipe the drive. And just like that, it's wiped. All right, now it's our whole process of uh, gutting the thing and cleaning it. All right, so I have everything gutted. As you can tell, there's a motherboard, network card, all the other stuff right here, and all the screws required to put everything back together. Theoretically, I should be able to place the uh, motherboard inside this thing, but first thing I need to do is I need to hose it down with disinfectant and clean it off. So here's the disinfectant. Hopefully this doesn't damage the speaker, or not speaker, a little sticker there. I'm not going to hose this, I'm going to do this manually. I already hosed the outside, I just need to hose the inside. 
So I'll come back uh, when I see fit. I'll most, likely, I'll most likely come back when I'm starting the process of actually fitting all my components into the case. One thing I actually should do first is I need to make sure I can find the back plates for my uh, GPU right here. Normally whenever I, uh, for the longest time when I've had this secondary system, I've always built custom cases for it. And I never needed that little back metal piece that the uh, normally goes onto the computer case. Because it usually gets in the way, so I removed it. I'm fairly certain I put it in a safe place, but I don't remember. So I'm going to go look for that. Oh, found the back plate. I managed to find a few screws that I can use at the bottom for the little I.O. right down there. I salvaged the little prongs from the uh, COM port on that old motherboard. The one screw I don't have is a screw that goes here. I almost likely rigged something up because if my memory serves, it was a screw with a nut on the end. So I should be able to get something to work there, but... At least now, if I can get everything to fit inside that computer case, I'll be able to properly mount my uh, GPU and actually have it properly mounted instead of it just being on, well, just resting on the motherboard, resting on the pins and pulling the pins out. Because this thing is fairly heavy. It's not as heavy as my uh, 580 right there, but this thing's still fairly heavy. So, uh, yeah, I'll come back uh, a little bit later. Alright, so I got everything kind of in a way to where I can test it. The thing has booted, though I'll have to rewire the, uh, though I'll have to rewire the uh, little uh, cable here for all the uh, power and LED functions, so I can actually have all that functioning right. I had to just do a normal jump through a, uh, through a screwdriver. But one thing I'm concerned about is does the CD drive I'm using or DVD drive I'm using actually work? Because I got two drives right here that I initially tried using that failed to actually read the discs. Now granted they're the exact same thing but they had the little light scribe label on them. Granted light scribe is pretty much dead, but I know these two for the longest time were fully functioning DVD drives. So um, let's try this one out and see what happens. Hot damn, I got working CD, uh, working DVD drive. Yay. So really now all I gotta do is I gotta button up this computer and uh, and rework the uh, rework the uh, power or the I.O. harness so I can actually properly turn the thing on and off. I might need to also bend these back slightly, I don't know, because it's really close to the edge of the case. So, um... Wiring nightmare in this old thing is a wiring nightmare. So, at the very least, what I'm going to be do, what I'm eventually going to do is I will be swapping out this power supply for a more newer one, and I'll probably also need to find me and order me a new backplate for my motherboard. I can't find it for the life of me, so for now it's going to be like that. But I do eventually plan on replacing the power supply and getting a new backplate for the motherboard. It may be swapping in a different cooler if this one doesn't work right. Though I'm thinking it will still close, but it'll be very, very tight. Alright, so with the uh, wire harness all rewired, let's see what happens. Is it still not working? Well, that sucks. I swore I wired it in right. Uh, hmm. I don't know how well the camera can pick it up, but this thing is a rat's nest to work in. Especially with the fact that I had modified these cables significantly for a previous uh, case build. 
And since I think I'm actually going to use having all my parts in this thing now as its uh, main home, I do need to eventually upgrade to a different power supply so I can at least semi cable manage all this stuff better. I'll probably need to get a driver and probably need to get a drive adapter too so I can probably use this little expansion bay and probably move a few of these drives up here so I can try and cable manage all the wiring into this little section here. But uh, for right now, I'm happy where I'm at with this thing. And all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to close the thing up and uh, see what ha and see if the thing boots. I do know I also need to get a case fan. But uh, again, this thing for right now, really, I don't do much gaming on this. But when I do, it's fairly light. So even if I do do some gaming, I shouldn't cook this thing too much. And plus, eventually I do plan on, like I said, I'm getting a getting a case fan for back here and upgrading the power supply to something different because this power supply is older than Sin and it's it's nasty. It's a, it's some uh it's some power supply I got from Best Buy for like twenty odd dollars like three, five, three, five years ago. So uh yeah. Also another reason why I need to upgrade to a different power supply so I can actually have a SATA power for the DVD drive. I have a SATA data, but I don't have any power because all the power goes to my hard drives. So right now I'm just sitting there being purdy, but I do plan on actually using this DVD drive a lot more often than most people think. So I'm going to put the case back together and uh, see what happens. It's actually the next day now. The reason why I did that is because the original part that was going here was way too long. So let me do a run over what's going on. <clears throat> I have the sleeper build on top of a piece of wood on the carpet. Here's my main monitor. And I set the uh, gateway monitor up here so I can have a secondary monitor. <coughs> and I move the uh, subwoofer that actually used to be down here up to here. That way so I can easily get to this computer case. Because if I had it initially the way it was, I actually had to put this thing in quite a bit. And actually have it underneath this little uh, piece right here. So if I wanted to use a DVD drive when I got myself a new power supply, I couldn't do it because the door would actually be blocked by this. And plus, I kind of wanted it this way anyways. <clears throat> so for this part, I just want to do a thermal test and see what the thing is like when I'm actually gaming. So right now I have CPU uh, core temp up and running. These are what the idle temperatures are. I do have one cord I'm running a bit more hotter than normal. I need to probably reseat the uh, cooler, but idle temperatures are well within the norm for the i5 I'm using. And these are the temperatures for the GPU, which is at 96.8 for uh, for us Freedom users, because we don't use centimeters, we use Freedom units. So obviously I have the core temp in, in Fahrenheit, I'll just have to uh, swap to Google whenever I uh, do the uh, gaming portion of this part. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to load up GTA 5 and come back. Alright, so all I need to do now is just play this game for about 30 or 40 odd minutes and see what the uh, temperatures are like in the, uh, at the end. So uh, I'll come back in about 20 to 30 minutes. Alright, so it's been about a good 20-30 odd minutes. Let's see what the final temperatures are. For the uh, CPU, it's around 130 or so. Max was 131 apparently. For the GPU, I was monitoring it throughout. It averages around 69 to 73. C, which is in freedom units, around 160 degrees Fahrenheit. Which is fairly hot, but it's well within its op it's well within its operational uh, temperature. So even though this case isn't exactly the best when it comes to airflow, especially with the cable management that this thing has, especially the little crappy uh, PSU I'm using, I'm actually quite surprised to see how well the temperatures are being maintained. Now, of course, like I said, I'm going to be getting myself a new PSU and a case fan down the road. But um, I might also might need to be putting that on a back burner if I uh, go for that Xbox uh, in the installment plan thing that they do. I'll most likely be getting the S model because I don't need the X. I don't need 4K. As long as I get 1080p 60, I'll be fine. Then again, I do have my computer here, but I wouldn't mind messing around with an Xbox S system. 
especially when I want to play like GTA Online. I can't tell you how annoying it is when I'm playing this game on my computer, just having to constantly swap sessions because of a fucking modder. So that's one of the things I'm looking forward to if I actually went for a peasant system. Now, of course, obviously, I'm going to be playing most of my games on my main system, but it would be nice to play a game every now and then on a peasant system, so I don't have to worry about modders in GTA Online. But what you going to do? Oh yeah, there's one more thing I forgot to mention before I end this video. Noise level, it's relatively quiet. It's significantly more quiet than my main system, but of course that's because my main system here has a lot more guts to it. And also, of all the ports I got working on this thing, I could not get the Firewire port to work, and I don't think this one here works. But all the other ports work, including the CD drive. Granted, again, when I get myself a new uh, power supply, but... All the ports except these two work, and I'm very happy with that. I'm very happy with the fact that I managed to maintain basically near full functionality of all the little ports on this thing. So, um, I think that's pretty much it for this video. I got myself a fairly decent little sleeper build, mainly got me a new case from my secondary system, and I'm quite happy with it.